James, can I just get your assessment of today's defeat at home to Dagenham and Redbridge? Disappointing loss, Greg. Um, I thought it was... Um, we, we struggled. We were, we were sluggish, I think. Our, our performance was sluggish. I think the timing of the of the um, the main actions in the game were not good for us. Um, so I, I didn't think we started the game well. I thought it was slow out the box. We, we wanted to be quick at home. We know we've had um, very good home form. I think that's the first game we've lost at home since October. Um, we knew, you know, we would have that... Um, extra energy at home if we started well and we tried to do that but we, we just didn't um, so I thought the first 10 minutes was was just trying to wrestle back some control in the game um, we were obviously behind at that time um, in the first goal disappointing timing and we had to we had to really battle and fight and, and, and wrestle to try and get some control again like try and get ourselves into the game plan that we had for the game and I think from about the 10 minute mark um, I thought we did that we took control of the ball um, we were getting into better areas to higher areas getting the ball um, to more dangerous positions and we were starting um, to look like what the game plan was we start to uh, embody what the game plan was looking like on the training ground and we were looking closer to what I thought um, the game would look like. Scored a good goal from that point. Um, like last week, really. Um, we were always uh, maybe a pass or two short of a good moment, short of some qu good quality. And I thought in the moment, the one moment that we did really, the goal, um, uh, it was excellent, excellent goal. Back in the game, 1 1. And then again, that sort of game management aspect, um, we as a group really struggled with today because I think. Um, although I've I've been told and it's been questioned by a, a lot of the players there and people I've spoke to that the decision for the penalty was a disappoint, disappointing one from the referee. Um, I don't know if it was or it wasn't. I've not seen it back. But I just know it was a disappointing time for us as a team. Again, after we just looked like we were taking control of the game. Scored 1-1. Thought we were on the bounce going into half-time. But then 2-1 down um, just before half-time. So... Really disappointing timings for us today of, of when all the main actions happened in that first half, which ultimately was the only half that matters because that's when all the goals were scored. Do you think it was kind of just that final pass, that final moment that you mentioned that we were missing today to enable us to, to get a result out of it? I think it was. I think it was. Um, I think it was just just quality towards um, the cutting edge end of the pitch. Really, and we were just low on it. I thought we got the ball to there, no problem. I think. Um, we were able to get the ball through and round, dagging them to key areas, but then um, the final cross, final pass, final one-two, final shot, it was it just eluded us. It just eluded us. And the game, um, we were always just trying to push the game and to get going. And that's how it constantly felt against a team that really, really slow played us. When the ball was out, they kept it out. When the players were down, they kept it down. And I thought... We, what we struggled with today for me was we, I don't know whether it's, is it, is it, is it lacking maturity or is it lacking um, a focus on what's really important? The, the scuffles and, the, and other bits and bobs that were going on in the game, they're not important. They play for the opponents. I think hurrying to get the ball back in play and get the ball on the ground and get the ball moving, that's the really important thing. I think that's the thing that the real elite teams would do to a team that's trying to slow play, trying to survive, because I don't think Dagenham had anything, really. And they had a couple of breakaways late in the game, which you would expect because of how the game is, and we're chasing it, and we're going a bit gung-ho uh, with numbers. But I don't think they had anything. Um, the goals were just flashbang moments, really, of us mishandling the game, in my opinion. Um, but, Greg, what, what I really trust in is... Um, the culture of this group. What I really trust in is their togetherness, their belief, their work ethic, and how they're humble and accept when we haven't done that well. So I think that's the reason that we've got thirty games in in the league, and that was only the first time we've been beat back to back. I think that's the reason that culture. So I back that culture no matter what the scoreline is. If we've just won three in a row or lost three in a row, I back that culture and I back this group of lads that will be on the training ground again with the right attitude that 
we need to be better than the last game and not an arrogant attitude that it was everyone else's fault because it wasn't it was ours and you'll have full confidence in that group of players that will come in on Monday and they'll show that attitude without kind of even needing reminding I've seen it all year Greg and this is a it's this whole season is a season of transition for the club coming down losing people losing money losing staff behind the scenes all sorts of change lots of difficulties that we've all had all year and I've seen that um, correct culture, work ethic, uh, ambition and humility, the balance of that. and we've, we've tried to strangle any arrogance out of this team, any arrogance at all. That um, We try to enjoy our wins um, with that as well. But we never get too low either with, with where we're at. Um, and we won't be getting too low with, with a couple of losses because this is football, this is, this is what it's like. And I think today... We were very nearly, but that is football. And maybe it wasn't a penalty, but that is football. Um, there was a lot of aspects that are really frustrating for us today as a team, a staff, a fan base. All of us united is frustrating. Like, But it is football. It does happen. And trusting in my players, this staff, this club, the way we've all been together, I really trust in that moving forward. I really trust in that when we go back to work again on Monday and accept it we can be a lot better. Positive in that uh, you got Carol Mitchell back on the pitch, obviously he's been out for a couple of months and um, I guess you would be delighted to have him back now going forward. Well. Really happy Greg, really happy. It was a massive loss, um, an, an innocuous incident in training which breaks your heart really when you know he just got to 10 goals so early and he's massive for the team. Um, and that same culture, humility that I talk about, he embodies it, he really, really does. Um, his selfless work from the front was so evident in the first part of the season and the 10 goals were amazing for him but everything else he'd done for the team I found amazing for the team and I know his teammates valued that too so to see him get back out on the pitch today was really good news really good to see and can, can only help us going forward and then there's a couple of guys you know close to returns as well who are big big players for us George Never, Adam Clayton Devante Rodney um, amongst others, amongst others, there's other, other guys out. Um, they're big players, and every time we see one of them return, it's a really good feeling um, because then we're not playing as many players out of position, and you know we can we can push towards being the best we can be. Is there a time scale on those lads, or is it just a case of soon? You don't want to kind of you don't um, want to put put the um, put the mockers on it. Do no, you? no, but. I should have no fear in telling you what we think, should I? Um, so, um, George, we hope will train next week. We hope uh, that's the plan. Adam Clayton, we think will train the week after. Devante Rodney, we think will train the week after. Um, so they're sort of solid whole time. Uh, George is is training in time for the next game. That doesn't always mean necessarily ready to start. Of course, Kean Hayes, we hope will train next week uh, with us. Um, yeah. BK's a long-term one, as you know, of course. Uh, I think that's pretty much it, in injury-wise. Mane, today, I think deserves a mention, Greg. He does, yeah. 16-year-old, um, making the bench. He's been fantastic for the youth team. And, you know, he, he trained with the first team uh, on an occasion last week. And, wow, he showed real talent. For such a young boy, he showed real talent. And... Anyone deserving in those youth team ranks, we, you know, as we've done all season, we we want to realign this club with what has been an amazing element of this club, the academy, and what's at stake for that moving forward. We truthfully don't know because we're in different financial territory than we've ever been in before. I don't know that. I'm, I'm the head coach. I'm not in charge of this football club in terms of the, the running and those kind of decisions. I don't know, but um, what I will say is that academy's been amazing for the club in producing young, talented players, and I believe in falling in line with the brave coaches that have been here before and showing them players, putting them on the front line. Um, my name at the bench today, I think it's an amazing achievement for him, such a young boy. Uh, I did see um, a potential scenario whereby we got him on the pitch for a few minutes, had the game gone a different way, but it didn't, uh, but still, Massive achievement for him and massive step um, for the club in alignment and showing 
what this club has been and what's been a special arm or branch of this club in bringing those young guys through. And uh, it was good to see him on a bench today.